everybody. I will present in this video a short overview of the work my group does. I would like to thank the Canadian Study Center, University of Innsbruck, Austria, for inviting me and for Professor Thomas Hoffman for suggesting me. So who are we? I'm an associate professor in disability studies at the Cummings School of Medicine, Department of Community Health Sciences. I'm also a member of the Institute for Technology Assessment and System Analysis, ETAS Karlsruhe, Germany, Olympism for Humanity Alliance, and a fellow at the Institute for Science, Policy and Society at the University of Ottawa in Canada. As to my group, which is the Community Rehab and Disability Studies Program, this is our vision and mission. The vision is to be responsive, sophisticated and just understandings of people of diverse abilities. And our mission is to generate research, education, policy and practice partnerships to improve well-being of people of diverse abilities. I am also supported by the Volpac, and I would say most of my work couldn't be done without the group. Here are two pictures of my group. Noteworthy about my group is, I think, that they're all undergraduate students or bachelor students when they start with me, many of them right in year one, right out of high school. This is my group, the alumni and the present group. So what do we do? As you can see here, we cover many different topics. This is possible because a lot of our work is done unfunded. With my undergraduate students, I often use course credits. So they work from right, May 1st to August 15th, for example, full time. And then they can get right, two, three credit courses. Uh, they can trade in for option classes they have in their degree. And with that, I can tailor a lot of the work to their interest, to their career trajectory and so on. We still do certain main areas, which is disability studies, which is about the coverage of non-medical aspects of the lives of disabled people. Ability studies, I will mention that in the next couple of slides, science and technology studies. Based on my background as a biochemist, I worked for a long time on the intersection of disabled people and science and technology studies and then sustainability studies. And then we have other areas like violence and abuse, sport, STEM, motivative reasoning, and so on and so on. As to ability studies, ability expectation and ableism studies, short ability studies, investigates how ability expectations, the one stage nice to have, and ableism, the need stage, abilities essential to have, hierarchies and preferences come to pass, and the impact of such hierarchies and preferences. The concept of ableism was developed by the disabled people rights movement during the 1960s and 70s to question irrelevant normative body ability expectations and the ability privileges, ability to work, to gain education, to be part of society, to have a positive identity, to be seen as citizen that come with them. And the disabilism, the ability expectation, and ableism, oppression, the negative treatment of the ones judged as impaired as ability wanted by applying irrelevant body ability expectations. Ability expectation and ableism dynamics exist, however, not just in relation to disabled people, but is a defining dynamic between humans in general. Humans, animals, human nature, human post transhumans increasingly the same as with human cyborg humans. Humans, not sentient machines, we just have to look at the debates around robotics and artificial intelligence. Humans, sentient machines, if artificial, artificial intelligence gets to a certain area, then animal, sentient machine, and nature, sentient machine. Obviously, I can't present everything we do, so I chose recent work we published on disabled people and the case of artificial intelligence and machine learning work done by Aspen Lillywhite. Many factors can influence by, with, for whom, and how a topic is discussed. What is said or not said, but could have been said, and what is researched, and so on. One is the portrayal, imagery, and definition of being. How one is portrayed, imaged, and defined is one factor that can influence how a problem is defined, what solution is sought, the role one is to have, what is seen as the impact, 
and who is seen to be impacted. As the second one would be a tone of coverage, right? The coverage could be techno-optimistic, techno-pessimistic, techno-utopian, techno-dystopian, techno-realistic, techno-critical, and so on. A techno-optimistic tone, for example, does not lend itself to cover disabled people and others being negatively impacted by a given topic, such as advancements in science and technology. It facilitates a focus on certain roles of disabled people and others. Disabled people are impacted by AI ML in many different ways, as potential non-therapeutic users, as potential therapeutic users, as potential diagnostic targets, as in preventing disability as an impairment. By changing societal parameters caused by humans using AI ML, AI ML outperforming humans, and the increasing autonomy of AI ML, and therefore the ability of AI ML judging disabled people. There can also be different roles of disabled people, like being therapeutic and non therapeutic users of AI ML linked products, but also being victim of negatively impacted by AI ML product use and processes. Being knowledge producer and knowledge consumer of the products and processes and being influencer of and knowledge producer for AI ML ethics and governance discourses. Here's what we found in relation to AI ML and disabled people in 1,540 academic abstracts, 234 articles from 300 English language newspapers and 2,879 Twitter tweets. There is minor to no engagement with ethics in relationship to disabled people. The discussion around disabled people being involved in or impacted by AI ethics and governance discourses are absent. AI for good and AI for social good not mentioned at all in the content covered. As to imagery of disabled people, the main one was the patient health angle. You can see under this, I mean, this table, August 1 to 17, AI and patient has 1833 tweets. AI and disabled people, for example, has only 13. As to the role of disabled people, the roles were about therapeutic and non-therapeutic users, and the stake and identity narratives were linked to the therapeutic and non-therapeutic user. As to the tone of coverage, it was exclusively techno-optimistic. We found no content covering negative effects of AI ML use by society on disabled people, of autonomous AI ML on disabled people, of AI ML causing social problems for disabled people, beyond the need to access AI ML related technology or processes right, in the role of being a user, a consumer. As a tone of coverage, it's purely techno optimistic, also in the Twitter tweets we had. Within the 2,879 tweets that mention AI or artificial intelligence or machine learning and at the term people with disabilities or disabled people, the common phrases were empower people with disabilities like in 439 tweets, AI to help people with disabilities, help disabled people, to improve lives of people with disabilities and so on. And 1739 tweets linked were linked to the accessibility initiative of Microsoft using wording such as AI can do more for people with disabilities and so on. So how are we linked to the University of Innsbruck? As to my collaborations with members of the University of Innsbruck, this is a talk I gave in November at the COVID conference, which I was invited to, to be part of a panel organized by Professor Hoffman. In 2019, I gave a talk about ableism at the Vortragsreihe des Arbeitsbereiches Inklusive Pädagogik. And here's some publications from 2019 with Professor Hoffman. Then 2018, were two English pieces from my group, which Professor Hoffman translated into German for the book where he's one of the editors. And then a 2015 one, Lisa Fahl was the editor of a special issue of a journal. 
And that's all it is. Thank you very much. Hope you find it interesting and feel free to contact me.